Hey everyone, I'm TGH and welcome to Community Chaos, the series where you choose the Pokemon I use on the in-game ranked ladder. As always, I held a community poll for this episode's feature Pokemon and the results were loud and clear. So today we're going to be building around Chandelure. Let's get into it. So the first thing you might notice when looking at Chandelure from a competitive standpoint is its massive 145 base special attack stat. It's a higher main attack stat than a ton of offensive threats in the format right now. Fluttermane, Urshifu, Raging Bull, Dragonite, it's higher than all of those. What holds it back is its middling speed combined with not the best bulk in the biz, uh, particularly in its HP stat. A Pokemon like Fluttermane can get away with not having a ton of bulk because of how fast it is, making it a more consistent offensive threat. Base 80 speed is a little awkward to deal with though, uh, but there is a specific reason for the speed investment that I've chosen to have here. I'll get to that later. Chandelier does get access to Trick Room, which absolutely does help it a lot versus faster teams. Terra Grass and Energy Ball to flip the matchup on and get a one-hit KO on Urshifu Rapid Strike, which is pretty cool, and also let it have a much easier matchup into Terra Water Amoongus. Uh, Life Orb helps it deal just a devastating amount of damage, and our HP EVs are invested accordingly for the total stat to hit 1 under a multiple of 10 to minimize Life Orb recoil. For those who don't know, it's best for a Pokemon holding Life Orb to hit an HP value ending in a 9 because of the fact that the game rounds down on almost everything, including recoil to your own Pokemon. A value of 160 here would have me take 16 HP of damage each time I attack, but 159 lets me only take 15 because of the rounding. So how do we support Chandelure? We know it packs a huge punch, but it's on the frailer side, so what makes a good overall solid partner for it? A pretty easy answer to this is Ogre Pond Wellspring. With the ability to redirect with Follow Me as well as deal heavy water type damage itself with Ivy Cudgel, honestly, Ogre Pond Wellspring is just an amazing option for any team, really. There's a reason it rose to number one usage in day two at Knoxville. It is just an incredible Pokemon. It's oppressive as well as disruptive for the opponent and just plain hard to deal with. This is a pretty bulky and slow set, which Water Pond seems to like more than other Ogre Pond forms, which seem more tailored to offensive play. Redirection here is especially appealing considering Chandelure's weaknesses and the fact that a few of them are covered pretty well by Ogre Pond Wellspring, the most important being Water, in particular Urshifu Rapid Strike. This is a pretty classic set for Ogre Pond with Horn Leech and Spiky Shield to round out the set. Now, for the rest of the team, I felt I wanted as many options and tools as I possibly could. This particular duo right here in Chandelure and Ogre Pond Wellspring lends itself really well to being used in a huge variety of ways to get an edge on opponents. And I wanted the rest of the team to enable that. The next Pokemon I added was Ferrigraph. This Pokemon is incredibly good right now, and I'm a big fan of this set in particular with Throat Spray, which lets it be a defensive wall with the EV spread that I have here, as well as a big offensive threat if you let it sit on the field for too long. The best thing about Frigoraph, though, is its ability to block priority moves with Armor Tail, uh, especially with priority being everywhere in the format right now. Frigoraph is a great way to keep that in check. Frigoraph also generally makes for a great partner to basically whatever offensive threat is alongside it with the ability to set Trick Room, of course block priority moves, helping hand its partner for a huge attack, or set itself up with Hyper Voice and Proc Throat Spray to raise its special attack by a stage. So the next choice to me was pretty obvious, honestly. I wanted a Pokemon to help round out the Trick Room mode I had begun to establish here with Chandler and Frigoraph, and I could think of no better Pokemon to do just that than Torkoal. Honestly, I can't say enough good things about the role Torkoal plays on a Trick Room team or mode, this one being no exception. It's almost guaranteed to be the slowest Pokemon on the field with its 20 base speed, especially with zero speed like this one is. It can tear a fire and use eruption in its own set sun for devastating spread damage. It gives the team weather control and in this case directly benefits Chandelure's heat wave. I also got a little sneaky with the set and added Lava Plume, which hits all Pokemon on the field, including my own, including its own ally, and can proc Flash Fire on Chandelure while damaging the other side as well. 
There aren't too many Pokemon right now that can withstand a Lava Plume, plus a Flash Fire and Sun Boosted Heat Wave from Chandelure on the same turn. We'll see how many times I can pull that off in games, if any. Okay, so at this stage in the building process, I'm thinking in terms of speed tiers. I have a few middling tiers as well as a super slow tier covered for my Trick Room mode. Uh, but now, to truly round out the team and to flesh out my options, I need some faster Pokemon. And I thought, what better than Fluttermane to be one of those faster options, as cliche as it might be. Uh, Toy Specs gives it plenty of power still, and lets me justify the timid nature, letting me outspeed threats like Adam and Jim Pao, and opposing modest Fluttermane, as well as having quite a bit of bulk without feeling like I'm sacrificing a bunch of offensive presence. It also serves as another potential Trick Room setter on the team if I feel like it's the best option. Having this particular Fluttermane next to Ogre Pond, for instance, gives me a lot of options, including letting Ogre Pond redirect and take hits for Fluttermane as it sets up Trick Room for a surprise slow mode in the back. Uh, a Torkoal switch in can speed it up if necessary with a Protosynthesis boost, or Fluttermane coming in for an end game to clean up while the sun is still up from Torkoal having been in can be a win condition on its own. So at this point in building, it made a ton of sense for me to just make this a tail room team, quote unquote. In other words, a team that has access to and benefits from both Tailwind and Trick Room. And I thought the best option for a Tailwind setter given the rest of my team was Whimsicott. Why, you might ask. <laughs> when you look at this team, Honestly, with the exception of Ogre Pond, they're all special attackers, and Fake Tears is a move that lowers a foe's special defense by two stages, and almost the entirety of my team can take advantage of this when they are next to Whimsicott. Plus, Encore is a fantastic disruption tool for unsuspecting Pokemon who try to use setup moves or protect. You can Encore them into that setup move or protect, which is pretty cool and devastating for your opponent. Not to mention, of course, Whimsicott gets Prankster, which makes all of its status moves have plus one priority. Now, sometimes this can work to my disadvantage because Prankster doesn't work on Dark-type Pokémon, but Fluttermane deals well with that. Fluttermane deals well with Dark-types, of course, and uh, Whims will likely be uh, used next to Fluttermane quite a bit as part of my fast mode. So I mentioned earlier about Chandelure having a specific speed stat. That speed stat is 107. This is an important number because Dragapult's max speed hits 213, and under Tailwind, Chandelure will outspeed that by one point. Whimsicott's presence on the team makes it so that I can use Chandelure in both a slow mode with its own Trick Room or a fast mode with Whimsicott as its partner, or otherwise setting Tailwind that it can take advantage of and outspeeding basically anything that isn't Choice Scarfed or under Tailwind themselves. All right, before we get into the games, be sure to check the description for my self-imposed rules for the challenge. Keep in mind that I have to bring Chandelure to every game I play, and I don't allow myself to test these teams beforehand, for better or for worse. Uh, also, make sure you comment down below with suggestions of Pokemon for me to use in the next episode of Community Chaos. I can only add four to a community poll, unfortunately, but I tend to take the ones that I find most interesting and put them up in the poll on the Sundays after I upload. So be sure to vote in the poll as well. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really goes a long way. Okay, so before I actually start the games, uh, I caught this magical moment uh, during a picnic with my actual in-game team and uh, uh, check out these mad uh, football or soccer skills uh, on Gen Pao. <laughs> Let's check this out. <laughs> Whee! Wow. Scarlet Violet is a brilliant game. All right, here we go. Let's have some fun. Chandelure time. All right, we got Porygon 2, Amoongus, Tinglu, uh, Hisuian Gudra, Fluttermane, and Cinderor. Okay, so this is a pretty defensive team uh, with some offensive tools as well, but this is pretty defensive. It's got a Trick Room option. So, all right. If we can somehow deny Trick Room, which is going to be really hard with Porygon 2, like we can take advantage of this with Tailwind. Um... My only worry, it kind of makes me wish I had put Taunt or something on, like, Whims or, uh, or, like, Ogre Pond or something. But I think we do really well here, honestly, with, uh, with Ogre Pond. Um, and I think Chandelier does pretty well here, too. Um, just gotta be kind of careful with Incineroar. Like, I definitely like Chandelier 
and Ogre Pond lead here. I think that's the lead that will uh, have the least amount of potential disaster. Uh, but what do I want in the back, I wonder? Um, I don't know, I kind of want to lean into their own trick room mode, so we'll go... Uh, uh, I gotta, I gotta hurry up here. We'll go. Well, let's go for rig and flutter. Let's see how this works. Yeah, this is um, an interesting team makeup. So they obviously have the trick room option. They're pretty defensive with a Moongus and Incineroar and uh, and Hisui and Gudra. But like, if I'm not careful, they could run away with with uh, like setting up with Hisui and Gudra. So I kind of want to make sure that doesn't happen. All right, this end out Incineroar and Porygon 2, so they're probably going to go for Fake Out plus Trick Room, if I had to guess. So, under that premise, they could probably go something like... Or we could we could just, like, probably... Mm, I don't know how risky it would be to use our own Trick Room here. Uh, it's tough. Bunch of different things could happen on this turn. I do kind of like going on the offensive here, because, like... Um, I also do kind of like Terra Grass on Chandelier here. Let's go, um, let's go, let's just go Heat Wave. Let's just go offensive with, uh, with Chandelier and we'll go, uh, we'll go Spiky to avoid Fake Out on Ogre. I think we do just kind of lean into the Trick Room here. Okay, perfect. So they're going to take damage from that. Heat Wave's going to do, well, a little bit to Porygon 2. I'm expecting Trick Room, but we'll see. Yeah, there's a Trick Room. All right, so, mm, yeah, Trick Room might have been an interesting play there, but we're just going to lean into it, kind of. Um, I do like Terra Grass here, uh, just to avoid super effective damage from, like, potential knockoff. Um, I also kind of like the redirection option here with Ogre Pond, um, but I'm, I don't really care that much about Thunderbolt. It hits for neutral. <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly okay with just, like, redirecting plus Heat Wave. Yeah, we just Heat Wave follow me on this turn. Try attack from Porygon 2. Okay. Does a little bit. Who's coming in? Is it Ting Lu, I wonder? It might be Ting Lu. Um if that's the case, next turn, if they double up on the uh, on the Ogre Pond. Yeah, if they double up on the Ogre Pond, which I think is the only way they can kill it. Oh, it missed whatever. What did it miss? It missed the Porygon, too. Okay, that's a little bit disappointing, but I do like Terra Grass here. I like Terra Grass Energy Ball into the Tinglu. Something tells me they won't see that coming either. So let's let's give it a shot. Give this a shot. It should be, it should be like super offensive. Um, I also kind of like a Horn Leech into that slot, too. I can see, honestly, I don't know if they would use like Stomping or whatever dark move they might have into the Chandelier. Either way, this covers for it. This covers for everything except for, like, Ice Beam from Porygon 2. Which they wouldn't use Ice Beam into that slot ever. Okay, Snarl's a bit annoying. It's okay. Ogre Pond's in not a bad spot right now either. Mm, okay, cool. Horn Leech is going to bring back a lot of this. Energy Ball's going to do a ton. This might just KO. Uh, the double up here might just... Okay, actually, I'm not sure anymore. No, not quite. Okay. I underestimated. I, I forgot how... I forgot just how bulky Tinglu is. Um, alright. What are you gonna do now? Ice Beam? But Tinglu is gonna go first. An Ice Beam from Porygon 2, if it has it. It's only used Tri Attack so far. Like, Tri Attack and Trick Room. Uh, and its special attack is raised, which is not great for me. Um, let's see. They have Incineroar still in the back. I will do this. So, yeah, Ting Lu's gonna go first. We'll see what it does. It's gonna snarl again. Is it missing Chandelier? Oh, I missed Ogre Pond. Okay. Eh. So, Ogre Pond probably goes down this turn. Yeah, it goes down the Tri Attack. Which is fine. Honestly, we did well to kind of stall out this Trick Room. And now Fluttermane uh, is gonna come in pretty soon. Still got one more turn of Trick Room, I think, after this. Not quite. Um, I'm in a bit of a tricky spot here now. A little bit of a tricky spot. Uh, at least, like, like... We've obviously whittled down this Ting Lu quite a bit here. Yeah, they do have one one turn left of Trick Room, right? And, like, I, I kind of want to focus down the Porygon 2, honestly. On a turn like this, just because... Uh, 
I don't want them to set Trick Room back up again, basically. We'll see what they... Oh, they withdraw Tinglu. Into what? Into a Moongus. Okay, well, I just use Heat Wave. Granted, my Chandelier is at minus two, but Hyper Voice is doing a lot. They haven't terra or Hyper Voice did a lot. We now have our special attack heightened. Um, Heat Wave is still going to do a bunch here to Amo Amoongus. has an interesting switch in there. Okay, that's a really interesting switch in. Yeah, I like just Energy Ball on Porygon 2. Like, now we're in a really good spot, actually. Now, I like... Um... Because I'm pretty sure Chandelier outspeeds the Porygon 2, right? Yeah. I do like just Psychic here onto the Amoongus. Like, they... I think they might have misplayed there. Because the Ting Lu was in a decent spot, but now if they bring in Ting Lu, that's... I, I don't really care. No, well, okay, well... Mm, I still don't really care about that, actually. Because Chandelier is going to outspeed... Uh, the... Insin. Energy Ball does KO, thankfully. At my, even at minus two, Energy Ball did KO there, so that is pretty big. Insin... I'm not really sure what Insin can do here besides, like, maybe knock off the Frigoraph. <clears throat> Psychic does not... Obviously, affect Incineroar, so... Um, I don't know what they're gonna bring in now. Okay, it is the, uh, it is the Amoongus. Well, their Trick Room option's gone. I think if we, I think Flutter's in a good spot if we focus down the Amoongus here. And as long as it's not Terra Dark Amoongus, like, we're probably okay. They could counteract this with a Protect here, which they, they switch again. Okay. Switching into Ting Lu. But Heat Wave's just gonna KO it. But it it's. Did it seriously? No, okay, okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, Frigoraph's gonna use <laughs> Psychic again into nothing. God. Yep, Knockoff's probably gonna. Oh, no, it didn't. Wow. Yeah, because uh, Throat Spray already got used. Uh, if Throat Spray was still on Frigoraph, we still. We, we definitely die there. Um. Farig does outspeed. Farig outspeeds, which is big. Farig outspeeds uh, the um, Incineroar. Yeah, again, same thing. If we focus down the, the uh, Amoongus, like, Fluttermane's in a good spot to deal with uh, the Incineroar. Assuming it's not, like, super offensive. Okay, is Heat Wave just going to miss a target every turn? Okay, missing Amoongus is really unfortunate. Um, however... Psychic at plus one. Just KOs it. Nice. Fergraph finally gets a Psychic off before it goes down. Good stuff. And it was a big one, too. So now Flutter can come in and clean up the Incineroar. Okay, so... I mean, it's not quite over yet. Like, I don't know. Like, the the, uh, the Chandelier is not doing much anymore. At minus two. What would they Terra to? Terra Water. Okay, well, Energy Ball was the right play, I guess, then. <laughs> it works for me. Energy Ball is just going to KO. So we did a decent job of, like, kind of stalling out their Trick Room with Ogre Pond. Ogre Pond's really good for that. The final blow dealt by Chandelier. Good stuff. All right, good stuff. So we're 1-0 with Chandelier. I, I like it. I like it. Chandelier did a lot that game. Besides just Miss Heat Wave. All uh, right, game two. What do we got? Uh, we got Don Dozo, but no Tatsu. Okay, it's Fluttermane Shiyu. What is my Fluttermane Shiyu uh, check here? Uh, it's Ogre Pond. So I think we definitely lead Ogre Pond. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of their own Ogre Pond. Glamora, they have no speed control. They have like, uh, besides for maybe if like Fluttermane has Icy Wind, like they don't have any speed control whatsoever. So I like kind of taking advantage of that. I am kind of a fan, actually, of leading off with Tailwind. Or actually, I, I could I could do Trick Room as well. I could do Trick Room as well. I could lead off like Farig plus. Uh, um, hmm. I do have options here. Like I I think whatever lead I send out here is definitely going to involve Ogre Pond. Uh, I I kind of like Chandelier in the back to take advantage of either Tailwind or Trick Room. But which one's better? Uh, kind of like Trick Room. 
Yeah, let's try this. Let's try this. Okay, okay. I don't know how well this is gonna go, but let's let's bring Torkoal in there to try and like maybe proc a flash fire with lava plume onto the chandelier. Let's see how this works. It very well might not work, but we'll see what happens. Nice hair. All right, I got Ogre Pawn and Glamora. Okay, so you know what I actually really like here? Um, I kind of like hard switching in Torkoal and setting Trick Room. Because there's no way they would use like Earth Power into the Ogre Pond slot, and there's no way that they would use Ivy Cudgel into the Water Absorb Ogre, Ogre Pond, right? So, like, after that, then we can deal a bunch of damage, set Sun for Chandelure. Yeah, I do, I do like that. I like that, and we set Trick Room. But yeah, I, I do think that was a good lead to cover for uh, Fluttermane plus Chiyu. So here's the sun. Here comes the sun, or however that song goes, I don't know. If it's even a song, is that even a song? I, I don't know. Terra Dragon Glamora. Okay, that's a little... Um, God, it makes me wish I had Dazzling Gleam on... Uh... Yeah, Horn Leech and a Torkoal is fine. And Mortal Spin. I don't mind Poison that much. Uh, I intend to Lava Plume anyway. I wonder what they would do here. Would they protect, like, the Glamora? I wonder if the Glamora even has Protect at this point. Uh, it might be Assault Vest, although a lot of Glamoras are running Power Herb along with Meteor Beam nowadays. Um, I could just hard switch in Chandelure for Ferrigraph here and Lava Plume. Let's see. Let's see. Let you know. Let's have some fun. Let's see how this works. Let's 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 see how this works. Even though both of these Pokemon right now, like Ogre Pond can't Terra anymore now that they've Terra Dragoned. Okay, Spiky Shield's fine. Let's see if the Glamora protects too. Not quite. Okay. I do like that protect there from. Uh, from Ogre Pond, though. Oh, sick burn. I mean, it's a special attacker, so it doesn't matter as much. Power Gem is fine, so Torkoal goes, goes down. But now we have a Flash Fire boosted Chandelure on the field, and our choice to bring in whatever here. Uh, I do like bringing Frigraph back in, maybe for a Helping Hand. Helping Hand Heat Wave? I wonder if Helping Hand Heat Wave Flash Fire Boosted would kill the Terra Dragon Glamora, even if it's like Assault Vested. I don't have any indication yet as to whether or not it's Assault Vested. I don't know that calc with Terra Dragon at all. Um, oh, what? Oh, somebody bought some merch for me while I'm recording. <laughs> Shout out to whoever that was. That that's super cool. Oh my god. Uh, you know what? I actually just like uh, I like Psychic and we'll go Heat Wave as well. And we'll see if the Ogre Pond can survive this. <clears throat> I might have wanted the Hyper Voice, actually. Heat Wave does kill the Ogre Pond, not quite the Glamora, and now it's probably going to Power Gem. Chandelure. And it doesn't survive that. Okay. So now we have, what, Ogre Pond and Farig. I think, I think this uh, Glamora is Assault Vest. So now it's a 2v3, but it's kind of the two that I want on the field. Uh, did they bring Don Dozo is the question. If they did, then I like Ogre Pond being on the field. And I like Hyper Voice plus like Horn Leech. But I don't know what they brought. It's Don Dozo, okay. And they've already Terra'd, so I can freely Horn Leech this, and I'm not sure o I'm not sure uh, Don Dozo can do a lot here besides maybe Yawn. Uh, but I like Hyper Voice and I like Horn Leech. Hey, Don does it goes for a wave crash in the sun. That's nah, not going to do anything. Not much at all. Hyper voice. So we get the plus one on Farig, which is nice. And now it's a 2v2. Hey, they did a bunch. All right, awesome. So, uh, what do they? What else do they have? Chiyu. If Chiyu, they have a uh, flutter. They have Urshifu. Okay, it's Dark Urshifu. Um, we have one more turn of Trick Room, right? We do. Okay. Uh, I wonder if this might... Honestly, I would not be surprised if this were Choice Scarfed Urshifu. 
uh, just because of the lack of speed control on the team. Uh, it's hard. It's hard to tell, though, because like it could also be Sash. Uh, I think if this Urshifu protects on this turn, if it is Sash, it's in a pretty good spot. It's a tough one. At least I can't Sucker Punch, though. Uh, I'm going to go Hyper Voice plus uh, Horn Leech into... <clears throat> okay, Protect on Dozo. Okay, the Urshifu must be Scarfed. I also think the Urshifu goes down here. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And now Trick Room ends on exactly the turn I want it to. And Dondozo is kind of screwed here. Cool. I'm very glad that Urshifu was uh, evidently choice scarfed. Good stuff. And now there's nothing they can do. Awesome. Okay. 2-0. Oh. Uh, Chandelure did... Um, it, it dealt one huge attack and then just kind of did nothing else. Which honestly is kind of what this Chandelure is designed to do. Like, it did a ton in game one. It did a lot more than I expected it to, uh, even against, like, a more defensive team. But, like, against a more offensive one like that, uh, it's kind of expected that it would just come in and deal one huge attack. Like, Sun boosted, uh, Flash Fire boosted, Heat Wave is no joke. It just KO'd Ogre Pond. Like, it just KO'd Ogre Pond and uh, did a bunch to the, uh, evidently, Assault Vest Glamora, uh, Terra Dragon, even. So, yeah, good stuff. And we're 2-0. Let's do one more. Okay, game three. Let's see if we can make it 3-0. Oh, wow. Okay, we got Mimikyu, Sinistra, Crocodile, Iron Hands, Gyarados, and Hisuian Gudra. What do I even do here? Like, like Crocodile... Does Crocodile get fake out? I forget. I know it's I know it's an Intimidator, and I know it's a dark... It's a dark ground type. I know that much. Uh... Q is interesting. It's a pretty slow team. In fact, it's a very slow team. I like Torkoal here quite a bit. Um, like, a lot, actually. But what's my lead here? Uh, I kind of like a uh, an, an Ogre Pawn. Ogre Pawn plus Chandelure lead here. Like, the thing is, they are probably going to try and set Trick themselves. They have a lot of tools to do so. Um, but I definitely like my own Torkoal. And I like Fluttermane coming in the back here. In the sun. After Trick Room is over, of course. Uh, so, of course, like, sun will boost Fluttermane's speed in this case because of Protosynthesis. It is a timid flutter. We'll see how the endgame goes, but I, I like this lead, I think. Uh, this lead gives me a bunch of options. Of course, like, we can redirect into our own Trick Room if we think they aren't going to set their own. Which, like, they didn't bring a Trick Room setter. However, this I'm I'm not sure I enjoy this lead really that much. Um, I don't like this lead at all, actually. Uh, I think we, I, I kind of wanted to set Trick Room here. I think what we do is we, yeah. If I let the problem is if I let this Gudra do like anything here, if I let it set up with Iron Defense, like it can just run away with the game, especially the Terra Waters. So I I like. Uh, Did I get that off? I hope I did. I tried to set Trick Room. It's Terra Dragon. Okay, that's worse. That's honestly worse for me. Terra Dragon's really interesting. It makes me yeah, I didn't even I didn't even get Trick Room off. That's fine. That's honestly fine. Fine. I, I, it actually worked out. Okay. You know, sometimes it just works out. I meant to do that. That, that was my plan all along. Also, I did not expect Draco Meteor to come out here. Not at all. Wow. <clears throat> That's interesting. So who went first here? Chandelier went first before anything. So, uh, I think I like doubling on the, on the Gudra here because, uh, well, actually, no, we have Fluttermane in the back. Like, I think we focus on the, uh, we focus on the, the Gyarados here. So I think we just Horn Leech plus, uh, plus Shadow Ball the Gyarados. Yeah, perfect. Okay. And there's no way they double protect here. That's perfect. Because, because now Fluttermane can come in and just kind of Dazzling Gleam them both to death. And there's also a good chance that Gyarados just can't touch, uh, oh, that's close. I just can't touch, uh, Ogre Pond. I went for Thunder Wave. 
that is fine enough. Like, Ogre Pond just kind of, like, pins Gyarados here. And then there's probably, I, I'm guessing that Draco Meteor would KO Chandler. But keep in mind, though, actually, no, I'm sorry. Gudra's minus two. Gudra's at minus two. I don't care about the Gudra. I really don't. Uh, you know what I kind of like, then? I like just Horn Leeching you and Hard Switching and Flutter. <clears throat> I like getting Flutter in here. Yeah, because the Ogre Pond's still going to outspeed the Gyarados, and it just goes down. Perfect. So now, what is this Gudra going to do? It's a special attack in Gudra. It's not, in, it's not your Iron Defense Body Press set. Yeah, they went for Draco and Flutter. I figured that they might, if, if anything, but, like, even so, that wouldn't have done much to Chandelier because it's at minus two. And now they have Crocodile, and they've terra already, so Fluttermane can just freely, like, even Terra and Dazzling. Actually, no, I'm not going to Terra because, like, actually, uh, I don't I don't remember if Crocodile gets fake out. I, I simply don't remember. Uh, however, I think I'm going to Terra anyway. Uh, it could be Sashed, actually. It could be a Sashed uh, Crocodile, so I think I might just... Uh... Yeah, I'm going to follow me. I'm going to follow me with Ogre, Terra, Dazzling. If they call this and fake out, then good for them. <laughs> good for them, I guess. They earned it. But I, I, A, I don't even know if Crocodile gets fake out. Somebody tell me in the comments if Crocodile gets fake out. <laughs> I'll probably also look it up after the game. Uh, they did not go for fake out. However, I'm still expecting a Sash, which is why I used Follow Me. Faint? And Earthquake from Crocodile. Okay. I didn't see Earthquake coming. Okay. Also, Crocodile outspeeding Fluttermane is wild. It must be Scarfed. Yeah, like it has to be Choice Scarf. But because it's Scarfed, it's not Sashed. And now it's essentially a 2v1. With our Fluttermane on the field, and we still have Torkoal in the back to raise our own speed. And we still have Chandelure here. I think we bring in Torkoal here. What could they have in the back? I don't remember what their team was, to be honest with you. Um, it's Sinistra. Okay, so this is pretty much over at this point. They've already terra Like, an eruption just kind of, like, demolishes here. Like, whichever one they go for, like, they, they've got a powerful attack coming from the other Pokemon here. Like, Macha Gacha. Yep, battle's canceled. Awesome. Uh, that is 3-0 and o with Chandelier. Chandelier didn't do a ton that game. It did deal, like, a bunch of damage to, like, their leads, uh, their leads, though. Like, Gyarados plus, uh, uh, plus the, the Gudra. Even though I mistakenly, I ran out of time on turn one, but ended up working in my favor, which was really funny. Um, I think the better play there was to just go for, like, Shadow Ball anyway, to be honest with you, on second thought, because I should have known that the Gyarados would have Taunt. So, like, unless I use, like, Follow Me with, uh, with Ogre Pond, which I knew that Ogre Pond outsped both of those Pokemon anyway, so using Trick Room there probably wasn't the correct play if I were to go for Follow Me. Like, I wanted to... What I wanted to do was kind of just, like, let Ogre Pond go, but as it turns out, yeah, I was I was mistaken for that. Like, I actually ended up doing the right play anyway uh, by timing out. Sometimes it just works out better that way. As far as you know, I meant to do that. It was all planned. It was all part of my plan. Um, but yeah, my uh, my consensus, my consensus, my my one man consensus on uh, Chandelier is it's pretty good. It's honestly like, I mean, it's fun. It's fun. I don't know how good it would be in like you know a, a tournament but it's pretty it's pretty fun to use it's like more fun than i thought it would be um so yeah let's uh let's let's uh let's get to the rating segment i suppose all right it's time to give chandler a rating i'm trying something new for the series where i give each pokemon i use a letter grade based on two particular criteria what its record was and how fun it was to use that's it Honestly, it's hard for me not to give Chandelure at least an A rating for going 3-0, and because of how much fun I had using it, Chandelure gets an A plus from me. It's probably not a Pokemon I would use myself in official competitive play or anything, which is what I'm going to reserve my S ranks for, but it's very fun to deal damage with, surprisingly easy to position with the right support, and certainly holds its own, honestly, into some pretty harsh threats. 
Hey, thanks for watching all the way through. I'll see you next time for the next episode of Community Chaos. Be sure to leave a comment with your choices for next time. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you liked the video. I would really appreciate it. And until next time, stay safe, stay hydrated, keep it chill, and I'll see you soon.